Hello and welcome to this edition of the Angels and Destiny show. Why is this show called this, you may ask? So I'll tell you, the accept me of angels messenger and the accept me of destiny is to make firm establish. So my guests and I bring you messages to establish what you need to know in the present. And of course, I like working with angels, the calmness they bring. Now, in a moment, I'll introduce you to my wonderful guest, Sarah Dawkins. But before that, I'd like to say thank you so much for watching the show live at a later date, as it means a lot to both of us to connect with like-minded people. Now, if you've never met me before, then my name is Ray, and I'm the founder of Radiant Angel Energy. And I'm a guide who helps you remember your divine presence so that you can heal your past, find your purpose, create your future, to expand your consciousness, understand your spiritual path get clarity on your next steps and take charge of your destiny so that you can fulfill your purpose in this lifetime. Now, each episode of the show covers various themes of your journey, a mini guide meditation or oracle card reading with the wisdom of my wonderful guests, like today's guest, Sarah Dawkins, about the four pillars of healing, those of physical, mental, emotional and spiritual, along with how they affect your health and healing. Now, Sarah is a holistic and healing coach, keynote speaker, the author of Heal Yourself, a multi-award winning entrepreneur, and previously she was a registered nurse for 20 years. Now, Sarah has extensive experience in health and healing from naturally self-healing, a multitude of health issues, and through her work as a registered nurse. Sarah supports clients to find and heal the root cause of their health problems, therefore improving their health and ultimately their lives. Now with testimonials such as, I first met Sarah having just been diagnosed with as diabetic. She listened patiently, gently showed me where I was telling myself a negative story and helped me identify a deep grief within me. My life has been enhanced by the wisdom Sarah shared with me. I've healed the diabetes. It's an ongoing story, but I know I have a friend who will listen and guide when I need it. And many years of profound grief and trauma, along with conventional medication, had left me stuck. Then I met Sarah. She enabled me to look deeply into my thought processes, which gave me some peace and respite from the destructive negativity that enveloped me. I had never encountered this approach, yet it was so natural and effective. Sarah has given me the key to free and heal myself. Her desire to help others is genuine and heartfelt. So without further delay, hello, Sarah, and welcome to the Angels and Destiny show. How are you today? Hi, Ray. I'm a bit emotional at listening to those um, testimonials read out, uh, but thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're, you're welcome. So before we get into this fascinating conversation, I want to remind you that not only can you share this video, but you can also ask questions, leave comments and thoughts as both Sarah and I want to be part of this conversation. So please don't be shy and say hello. So Sarah, why don't you tell us more about your personal journey and how we can heal ourselves? So for 41 years of my life, I believed that uh, we, when we were sick, we need to go to a doctor's, get a pill and a diagnosis and take the pill and we were healed. And that was how I was raised. That was what I saw in the medical model when I was nursing. And that was my whole belief around illness. You just live a relatively healthy life doing more or less what you want. And you take a pill when you've got a symptom or a, a diagnosis and, and you're healed. And it wasn't until I was 41, I was working in America and somebody questioned my use of pharmaceuticals at home. And, you know, when you think, well, why would she say that? Because she's a nurse and I'm a nurse and we're in this medical model. So I went home and I started researching um, uh, not just the pharmaceuticals, but how our body can heal itself. And I was shocked because this was something I'd not really been taught or I never really thought to, you don't know that you don't know until you become conscious of it. And, and she made me conscious of it. And so I'm now doing all this research, looking at how strong our bodies are and, and really we're miraculous beings. So I started to tweak my lifestyle and make small changes in the food I was eating. And within about a month, I healed acid reflux, eczema, and psoriasis. And um, I, so I kept on this healthy lifestyle. 
Um, I went on to heal chronic pain. I had lower back problems for a while and then I developed a frozen shoulder, then another frozen shoulder and then neck problems and head problems. Healed all of that. Um, and finally I spiraled into a dark depression and became suicidal. And because I was so stressed at that time as well, I um, my thyroid became underactive and I burnt out my adrenal glands um, and my blood pressure dropped incredibly low. It was 80 over 40 for a number of years. Um, and so I knew I could heal because I'd healed a, a lot of health problems. So I said to my doctor who wanted to medicate me, no, I don't want this medication, I've done that. I now know that my body can heal. So I, I didn't know what I was doing at first, have to be honest, because when you're in a deep, dark depression, you, your brain's not working and you, you barely get through the day. Um, but as I started to realize that I was feeling a bit better because I was out walking my dogs every day, I realized I was practicing, well, as I look back, I realized I was practicing gratitude and mindfulness, but at the time I had no idea what I was doing. I was just looking for that little tiny bit of blue sky in the UK, you know, in all those gray clouds and yeah. looking for like the, the flowers on the ground and the uh, just things to, to practice gratitude for. So it was then that I realized I was healing and, um, and started to look at what else I could do to support my healing. And I started doing a bit of meditation just to find peace within me at first. And then as I continued to heal, I started daring to look into the future. You know, what do I want my future to be now that I'm coming out of this? Um, so I went through a whole range of, of emotions and health problems before I actually changed my core belief from I need a doctor and a pill to my body now heals itself. So it was quite a journey um, and a shocking journey to say the least, because you know when your core beliefs are challenged, your old ego steps in and goes, oh, I don't really like that. That's causing me angst. But I you know, kept that open mind and just kept doing some reading and researching and making those tweaks. Yeah, it's, it's amazing how, um, you know, when we start on one, one path, we start or someone gives us a little nugget of information and we start going down um, that rabbit hole and it leads us further and further yeah. um, uh, down it. And then we start questioning, you know, all the things that we've always been told um, about. And we start figuring these things out ourselves. And I think it's absolutely amazing that you've been able to able to do that because I'm guessing being a registered nurse for so long I mean it, it must have had a, it must have there must have been a conflict between what you were having to do as a nurse to what you were doing massive conflict and I think a lot of that fed into why I ended up in that depression because at work I had to give pharmaceuticals and do what the doctor told me to do but at home I was no longer using pharmaceuticals and uh, looking for natural ways, so massive, massive conflict. And in the end, I stepped out of my role as a registered nurse and took my name off the register and trained as a coach to help people to help themselves like I'd found a way to help myself. Yeah, it's it's it's, it's great that you actually are, um took that took that step because you know it's a difficult step for people where you've been doing something for so long but then your core beliefs change and then it's like you've got that conflict but you've got that steady income that um sort of like stability you know and you've got that support in that thing and then suddenly you take a step off I mean did you find any of your um any other doctors or nurses sort of like had the same ideas or sort of like supported you or did you feel you were kind of like isolated at that time I was very different shall we say um yeah um most of my colleagues were in that medical model and um I think some of them didn't believe me and I did feel very isolated but I stepped out before I surrendered my license I actually stepped out of hospital nursing um, and set up my first business doing things like medical legal work, DNA testing. I became a trainer for all the mandatory updates that healthcare staff have to do. So although I was still a nurse, I wasn't actually dealing with patients and pharmaceuticals and medical management. I was just doing things like moving and handling and 
um, safety and fire and all sorts of mandatory training as well as um, work at home on the computer. So I was still a nurse. I needed my registration to do all of that. But I was no longer sort of in the, the midst of that medical model. Yeah. So so you kind yeah, so you kinda of like had that little bridge around before you took before before you before you took that step out. So what was the sort of like the final nail in the coffin that went, you know something, I've now got to take this, I've really got to do this full time now. I I can't just do it for myself. Um, I need to be able to help others. Um, my own healing was when I realized how how powerful our bodies are. Um, I, I need to help other people to do this. But it was because I'd always wanted to be a nurse my whole life. And I saw myself being a nurse until I retired or even died, you know, maybe didn't retire, just kept working my whole life. Stepping outside of that was challenging because it really then caused me a who am I authenticity challenge. And I think for two years, I didn't I didn't really go inwards and look at who I am if I'm not a nurse um, because I always identified with my job. And once I actually did that inner work to understand who I was, then I was able to surrender my license. And the, the way forward was to train as a coach so that I could understand how to help other people to help themselves. Because it's you can't just, it's not about teaching people, it's about helping them to understand their own selves and their own emotions and and why they've developed the the health problems that they have and look at the root cause analysis because we don't do that in the hospital we just look at the symptoms and then the doctor goes well that pill goes with these symptoms so off you go um but it's like we need to get deeper to properly heal that and and once I understood that through my own healing, then that was the reason I needed to train as a coach to be able to help others to to understand that too. Yeah, no, that that makes sense. And I think, um, you know, the medical profession has is changing slightly where they do kind of like there is, I think, more doctors and nurses now that um, especially after the last few years, are kind of like now actually going actually there is something different and actually looking at the root cause rather than just giving something for the symptom um, I'd, I'd like to think so but i haven't been to a doctor for an, a long 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 time um so i wouldn't know yeah yeah I, I think from talking to other people um i know but then you know I, you know um it, uh, some people like my mum okay so my mum's coming up for 80 this year and she um she went to had routine blood pressure at the um pharmacy because they do that they do that now and they couldn't get a proper reading in one arm so they did it the other and they were different on each arm so they said better go and see your doctor just to get a proper um a blood pressure check done and everything so i went to the doctor had a couple of blood tests etc or she had that and then she went to see the doctor and he went oh it's been a while since i've seen you mum goes oh yeah about a couple of years he went no it's been six years since i last saw you and apart from a bit of sciatica, aches and pains, et cetera, and, uh, and, and smoking, but that, you know, she's 80, let, let her keep smoking. Yeah. Her. She had nothing wrong with her. Fabulous. You know, and when she went to get her cataracts done and I was taking her to get her cataracts, it was so funny because you sit down and each time you have to go, they go, so what medication? And your mum would go, I'm not on any. No, come on, dear. You must be. What medication on? No, I'm not on any. To the to me, then she's not on any medication. No, she's not on any medication. Fabulous. Because she's always um, had the idea, and you know, as I always have, that the doctor is very is very much the last resort. If I, we will try all natural stuff yeah. before we go. I mean, I'm not going to say because doctor, you know, there is medicine that is beneficial for us. Yeah. Not to yeah. say you should never ever go to. A doctor or seek medical um help because it can help us yeah yeah and my dad was admitted as an emergency uh, about eight years ago now with pleurisy pneumonia and uh, sepsis he was found in a collapsed state at home and he wouldn't be alive if it wasn't for western medicine so it does absolutely have a place but for the vast majority of things outside of emergencies and trauma there's so much that we can do 
yeah, yeah, no, there, there, there is there are so, so, so much we, we can we can do with that. And, you know, and when we try and, and we look at all these alternative things. Um, but, but as you said, it's not just sort of like the natural medicines, are, um, you know, that we can take, like go to the gold and silver, which is absolutely amazing antibiotic um, and, and other things. But it's the root cause. So, so where does the root cause you, you come in? You know, is the root cause something physical? Is it mental? How how does it show up? It's often something emotional from way back in our past, and it's it shows up in a number of, of a number of ways. It can be autoimmune. It can be allergies, asthma, um, literally any symptoms, even pain can be attributed to childhood emotional trauma. And that's not to say that we are making it up. You know, we think that that's the problem, therefore that is the problem. Our subconscious manifests actual physical symptoms that cause us pain and rashes and um, uh, all sorts of problems. So when I ask people to tell me about their life and their childhood, I will sort of, I will, there'll be red flags to me and I will ask them to elaborate a bit more on whatever it was that they've said and ask about the people involved around that time and, and ask them to go back and look at it, not from the child's eyes, that the way they're holding it, because that, you know, we whatever happened to us, we hold it as that, that child that we were because that's we didn't know what else to do with it. But I ask them to go back and look at it with adult eyes and assess the whole situation and look at it through the eyes of compassion. And if we were in the people's places who said what they did or did what they did to us, how different would it be? And also, what did that person who hurt us go through in their childhood? It's about acknowledging the whole bigger picture um, through the eyes of an adult understanding. And quite often when they do that, it gives them insight and then they start to make the links. And it's not so much about what actually was said or what actually happened, although that's important. What's more important is how that person held it because we all hold it and we push it down um, so as to not deal with it. So, and we learn survival skills to, to get by in life around, working around whatever happened to us. And as the years go by, we can tend to forget maybe what happened, but our subconscious hangs on to the memories of the emotions. So when we are triggered, that is a trigger from something unhealed from our past something our triggers are, are things that we need to look at and deal with and quite often around menopause women will have a lot of things all coming up for healing um and and they won't have a clue as to what's going on because they will have all these waves of emotions and it quite often is our past coming back up to be healed but we when we go to a doctor they go oh it's the the menopause all your emotions are all over the place and there's some pills but let's look back at what happened and let's work through it through the eyes of compassion because it's us that carries that heavy burden, that weight. And the people involved might have even forgotten, not remembered, uh, don't even know who we are. So we carry that. So if we can allow some forgiveness, some softening of that and then let it go, it relieves us of carrying that heavy, heavy weight. It's not about... It's not about letting the other person off the hook. It's about allowing us to stop carrying that weight with inside of us and to let it go um, through compassion and forgiveness. Yeah, which which I, th I think is really uh, um, uh, quite important, which is why you see some women go through the menopause really easily and others it's, it's, a, it's a lot harder yeah. um, to, to go through with it. And something that I kind of like have noticed and with it also is um, that those that have been on a spiritual path for a longer time tend not to have as many symptoms as those that haven't been on a spiritual path for a long time, which was really fascinating when I actually sat down and looked at it and it's like, oh yeah, I can see where that would, would, would come in because, you know, if you were to look back at history, 
where was it ever written before the modern life that women went through menopause? I mean, yeah. we didn't live till, you know, into our 80s or whatever, but did it exist before modern times? I don't think it did as much as prolifically as it does now. It possibly did, mm. but but not by the same standard as it does today. Yeah, so it's it's always it's always fascinating um, uh, with, with that. But it's also quite nice now that more people recognise um, uh, recognise about it and it's talked about, and there are a lot more things that you can do, and that you know, people do sort of, um, sort of like look at the more natural natural things but I don't think a lot of people think about looking at where these symptoms come from so so they might not want to take the um uh hormone tablets and everything like that but they look at the natural stuff yeah which is which is great and does help but maybe if that's not helping as much maybe they should be looking at the root cause of where it comes from in 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 the history yes because when we when we don't take a pharmaceutical and we look to a more natural supplement um, to take in place, we're still using an allopathic medicine. Here's a symptom. What can I take for that symptom? Although it's not a pharmaceutical, we're still only treating that symptom. We have to go inwards and look what is underneath that symptom. Why does my body need to show me this symptom? What's it trying to say? Yeah, yeah, very, 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 very interesting. So how did you come about writing a book? Uh, it started with my own healing. Um, I wanted to share what I'd healed and how I'd healed it all. Um, and as I wrote, um, I got to 10,000 words and I'm like, well, that's it, I'm done. But this book is only about me and my healing and it won't reach that many people and it won't help that many people. So. So I reached out on social media and said, you know, I'm, I'm writing this book about natural self-healing. If you've healed yourself of something, uh, would you like to uh, write a chapter in it, sharing your healing with other people? So it's mine and 74 others, um, natural self-healing, some from conditions like cancer, um, multiple sclerosis, um, motor neurone disease or ALS, as they call it in America, allergies, asthma, Lyme, um, autoimmune, so many autoimmune, stroke, so many different health problems that all of these people have healed totally naturally. Wow, uh, that's that's absolutely amazing. You think 74 odd people. I know, right? That, 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 you know, that, that's incredible. But it also goes to show that people are out there doing doing this yes. you know, do, do, doing this they're not just relying on their own pharmaceuticals and, and everything they are looking at their ways of doing it whether you know it's you know, using a natural remedies or going within and looking at their at, at, at you know at their deep so if there's anyone watching this and of course if anyone's watching you've got any questions please do um put them in the comments as both sarah and i will come back well more if it's the, um, on this sarah will come back and we'll answer those questions um for you but if say like somebody um you know has got something um that they've got an issue with how do they start trying to look at finding the root cause or, i mean should they go there first or should they try a natural remedy first what would what would be the best way that someone watching could actually start on that process I think first and foremost, they need to just sit quietly and ask their body in like a mini meditation, what are you trying to tell me? What do I need to know? What do I need to do? What do I need to heal? You know, any of these type of questions that will open up dialogue with the, the body. And you might not get the answer there and then, and it might not come in words. You might have flashes of inspiration. You might meet somebody who has some information to share with you. But if you can ask your body, it's always listening. And your subconscious mind knows everything because it takes everything into it throughout your whole life without judgment. You're everything that it sees, everything that comes from your senses um, and the emotions associated with it. So your subconscious knows the answer. So sit with it um, and look at what you can do in your lifestyle. Um, you mentioned when you opened up the show for the physical, the mental, the emotional, and the spiritual. 
when we think about healing, we tend to only look at the physical, you know, what can I, how can I eat better? Do I need more exercise? Do I need to hydrate more? And do I need more sleep? And those are the areas we tend to go to first. And that's fine. You can do that. Look at what you are doing within your life along that physical plane. But then the mental is about practicing gratitude, being grateful for what you do have rather than focusing on what you don't have. Um, and um, being mindful, being in that moment, because quite often most of us live our life on, on autopilot and our mind is like way in the future or way in the past and we're not conscious of what's going on right here, right now. So gratitude and mindful are part of the mental health pillar. But also tax your brain. Like we moved to Spain, so I'm learning Spanish. Uh, every day is a, a learning day, right? But, you know, even crosswords or colouring or being creative, anything that, that helps your mind to move. Um, the emotional is about not just healing your past, about what's happened in the past to be able to forgive it, to let it go. It's also about the connections, your, your community, your friends, those bonds that you've got with those people. And the spiritual is about that little voice that's inside of us. Whatever name you want to give it, it doesn't matter. But that it's reconnecting with that little voice inside of us because it knows what's best for us. And it's the first voice you tend to hear when you ask yourself a question before your ego's got a chance to jump in and, and shout, you know, I'm going to do this to keep you healthy. It's that little voice underneath <laughs> that doesn't really shout. It's just there for us. So it's about reconnecting to that. So if you look at all those four pillars, there'll be something somewhere. Um, and chances are for most people, not everybody, but for most people, it's something that's happened in the past that you're still carrying within you that you're trying to forget or maybe have forgotten. And look at identifying what triggers you and then go deeper. Why does that, what's said or what's done, trigger you? Why did you get angry? What's underneath that? And then what's underneath that? And then what's underneath that? And there'll be something somewhere that will highlight something that's come up for healing. Our triggers are, are things that are coming up to be seen, to be healed. So sit with it. Don't berate yourself. Acknowledge that you're feeling angry or resentful or frustrated or whatever's coming up. Identify the emotion and then identify why. What is it? Sometimes it can be a learnt behaviour. Sometimes it's... Um, it's a, an emotional problem from the past. It might even be a physical problem, but it's there's something underneath. So keep asking your body questions and keep identifying. When there's something new comes up, try and identify where it's come from and, and ask those questions to get right underneath it. Yeah, beautiful. Thank you. Thank you for thank you for that. And as I said, if anyone's got any questions, then please do please do ask. So as you know, I do guided meditations and I read angel oracle cards. And each week I like to ask my guests what they would like me to do for themselves and those watching. So Sarah, would you like me to do a mini guided meditation or pull an oracle card for yourself and the viewers? I would love for you to pull us all an oracle card, please. And as always, I have my cards right beside me. Amazing, that isn't it? So um, for those that know, um, or those that don't, when I do the cards, um, I do the cards for what you need to know for your highest good at this moment in time. Because although I work with past life stuff, it's to learn and understand and heal from your past life so it doesn't affect you in your current. And when I take you into the future, it's so you can see, understand and know what steps to take for your future. So you can bring it back to the present. So everything is always around what we need for the present. So what does Sarah and everyone who's watching this need to know for their highest good at this moment in time? What does Sarah and everyone who's watching this need to know for their highest good at this moment in time? And let's see what God wants to come out and speak to us today. So we have got a view from above get the bigger picture which absolutely ties in with everything you've been saying today um, about looking back and seeing where these um the these issues these root causes may have may have come from so i just love the way that that card has has come out just to clarify and confirm everything that you've been saying 
um, today, you know, from the angels, absolutely amazing. So what it is saying, Sarah, and to everyone who's watching, you know, whatever is going on in your life, in, you know, see it from, uh, from a higher point of view, you know, see yourself in a hot air balloon, just looking down on the whole situation and what is, and what is going on. And just see the bigger picture because you might there might just be saying from one person that you're hearing, but when you actually look at the bigger picture, it might be the several people behind that. So it's not just that one person. There's more going on that will help you get an idea of what of what's happening and how you can actually um, help and resolve the issue. So I hope I hope that makes sense. But yeah, brilliant cards to confirm what you've been talking about. Fabulous. And that uh, it's yeah, I, I I love the way the angels and the cards work. It's uh, it's 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 so it's so amazing. So Sarah, do you have any insights or thoughts or last words of wisdom to leave our viewers? Yes, the biggest problem in the world today is stress. Stress causes inflammation in our body, and inflammation is the root cause outside of trauma of all disease and pain because that our body when it's inflamed produces symptoms so if you can identify what's stressing you treat it like a trigger identify why it's stressing you what is it about the situation or whatever's going on that's causing that stress and look at it through the eyes of what you can control because we can only control ourselves we cannot control anybody else or anything else. And chances are the things that cause us stress are other people and things outside of us, which we have no control over. And once we understand we can't control anything that's outside of ourselves, we can come back into ourselves and let go of the stress, let go of the need to control the situation or control the person. And in doing so, you will lose a lot of the inflammation from your body that's caused by that stress, which in itself can reduce many, many symptoms going on in your body. Beautiful. Thank you so much, Sharon, for, for that. Yes, yeah, stress is such a big thing uh, in, in the world at the moment. So hopefully that will help. Um, some people that are, that are watching the show. So I hope everyone, if you enjoyed this conversation and found it insightful, because I know I definitely have. So if people want to connect with you, Sarah, how do they do that? If you go to my website, everything is on my website. And my website is three W's, Sarah Dawkins, Sarah with an H, Dawkins, D-A-W-K-I-N-S. Beautiful. <laughs> Beautiful. And what I do is I will put the links um uh in the comments because you can also find sarah on linkedin facebook instagram twitter youtube she's got her own podcast um you know so i'll put all those links so you can you can actually um uh, ch uh check it out um so if you are now ready to remember your divine presence step onto your spiritual multi-dimensional path but you feel lost confused stuck or alone then please feel free to reach out and connect with me and we can arrange a free 20 minute clarity call, a video call to see where you are in now and how you can move forward to take charge of your destiny so that you can spread your wings and soar. And of course, you can receive a free future life progression recording to discover your destiny by going into your, by seeing into your future to get guidance and clarity that you can use in your current life, as well as a couple of other free gifts by signing up to my email list. And again, I'd like to thank you so much for watching. And I'd like to invite you to share this video as I'm sure there are more people who feel lost and want to get clear on their destiny just like you. And that the information Sarah has shared will be a benefit to them and you will be bringing them that benefit. And of course, if you're watching this on YouTube, then please feel free to subscribe and hit that bell button to be notified when the show goes live or I post new uh, guided meditations. And remember, you know, for myself and my guests, you know, every time you subscribe, uh, like, share, comment on any of our on any of our posts or our pages, etc., it really helps get our message out there, which in turn helps other people to help. So it's part of that um, butterfly effect. 
So please don't be shy about um, about sharing, commenting, liking and subscribing because it really does help get those messages out and you can be part of that. And of course, I look forward to seeing you um, all same time, same place next week. Again, thank you, Sarah. Thank you, everyone watching and take care. Bye.